screen visible and am i yes, audible now yes yes, yes, yes. So, good morning doctors and a very warm welcome i'm going to talk about interchangeable biosimilar insulins i'm going to talk about the evidence and the benefits and the world's first and only us fda approved biosimilar interchangeable insulin glargy and this is the topic today and it's a sponsored talk but i'm going to discuss the science of it so one minute my slides are not moving just give me one minute yeah so this insulin glargine has got approval in major markets now you can see that it has got a us fda approval in 2020 it's got an EMA, appro EMA approval in 2018. The India approval came, of course, in 2009. It's also approved in various other Asian countries. Now, how, how do you prove that this is interchangeable? Obviously, you need studies. You need PKPD studies where you want to compare it with the international or the gold standard U100 glargine or Lantus. Now, this is a very interesting study. It was a global PKPD phase one study where Bazalog, which is the Biocons insulin, was compared with the Lantus that is sold in the European Union versus the Lantus that is sold in the United States. So I'll be talking about three trials. In stride one was a phase three trial. In stride two was again a phase three trial. And so was in stride three. So these are interesting trials. And these, are the, these were global trials which happened several places. Now, the global phase one PKPD in type one diabetes so comparative pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics of a proposed biosimilar insulin glargy and reference insulin in patients with type 1 diabetes. This was presented at San Diego. Now, in, a, in this phase 1 study, what was the objective? The objective was to compare the PKPD of biosimilar glargy with the reference glargy in both of them. So the glargy from US and the glargy from Europe, Europe. The population of patients was 114 type 1 diabetic patients. What was the study design? It was a single center study. The patients were the randomized and double blind. So neither the doctor nor the patients knew which glargy they were receiving. A single dose was given and it was a three-way uh, study. And patients received a single subcutaneous injection of 0.4 units per kg of each trial drug. So now they were randomized. So it was a single center, double blind, single dose, three-way crossover, euglycemic clamp. Now a little word about the euglycemic camp, clamp. What you do in a hyperinsulinemic euglycemic clamp is that you inject insulin and you want to maintain the sugar as euglycemia or normal in a particular range. So if the patient is insulin resistant, when you give insulin, the blood sugar will not fall. Therefore, the injectable insulin required would be less. And opposite happens if the patient is insulin sensitive, like most type 1 diabetic patients are. When you inject insulin, the blood sugar will fall and you will need glucose to be injected to maintain euglycemia. This is the concept of a hyperinsulinemic euglycemic clamp. So this, in this, the patients were randomized within 20 days to either the, uh, it's called MYL, either the uh, glargine uh, from Biocon or the US glargine or the European glargine. And at visit two, the first clamp after 28 days, at the visit, at visit three, the second clamp and at visit four, the third clamp. And uh, within 10 days of the fourth visit was visit five or the follow-up visit. It was found that the serum insulin profiles and the mean serum insulin concentration of the three insulin glargine preparations were absolutely similar, right? So the profiles were nearly superimposable. You can see the three graphs that the insulin from Biocon, insulin from US and the insulin glargine from Europe had superimposable graphs as far as three things are concerned. So what are these three things which are important with any insulin, particularly with basal insulins? Number one, the onset of action. Number two, the peak action. And we assume that U300, uh, U100 glargine is practically peakless, but it still does have a small peak and the total duration of action. And also we can see for inter-individual and intra-individual variability. That means variability of uh, variability in two different patients with the same dose and variability in the same patient on dif at different times in the same day. So these are two different terms, inter-individual, two different an intra-individual in the same patient. So if you see the three graphs with the three different insulins, you see that the graphs are superimposable, which means that uh, 
the PKP days almost similar. So the bioequivalence of the biosimilar uh, insulin, glargine, biosimilar US and EU was demonstrated in patients with type 1 for the PKPD endpoints. Now we come to the INSTRIDE 1. This was a non-inferiority study. We were trying to compare the efficacy and safety of Biocons insulin glargine with the reference insulin glargine in type 1 diabetes patient. It was a global phase 3 study. In a phase 3 study, you've already in phase 1 done the safety studies, uh, sorry, the efficacy studies. So in a phase 3 study here in type 1 diabetes, it's uh, basically the phase 3 study is uh, a study comparing the efficacy of uh, the various uh, drugs that are being studied. So what we were trying to do here is the efficacy and safety of glargine by Biocon as compared to the reference insulin or the gold standard insulin, Lanctus, the INSTRIDE 1. This was a, a multicentric trial, unlike the previous study. There were several centers open label, which means the uh, observer and the patients knew which insulin they were getting. Patients were then ram randomized. A parallel group, which means that the different groups received different insulins and not the same. And it was comparison between the uh, group. So there were 558 type 1 diabetic patients. The HBA1C HB was uh, less than or equal to 9.5 at the time of screening. These were type 1s between the ages of 18 and 65. They were treated with once daily insulin glargine for at least three months. Now, how was it this done? Screening the patient happened for four weeks. There was a run in period of six, six weeks. And then there were two parallel groups. So one group received Biocons insulin and the other group received the reference insulin. And these patients were, received these insulins for 52 weeks, and then they were called for follow-up at four weeks. What was the primary endpoint change in HbA1c from baseline to week 24? What was the non-inferiority margin, the upper limit of the two-sided 95% confidence interval for difference in mean change from baseline to endpoint for HbA1c should not be greater than 0.4% at week 24? And... If this happens, that means that Biocon's insulin glargine is non-inferior. And of course, this uh, in, in the INSTRIDE 1, Biocon's uh, U100 glargine met the primary endpoint. What were the secondary endpoints? Of course, efficacy. So the HbA1c change from initial administration to week 52, the change in fasting plasma glucose, change in insulin dose, and the self-monitored blood glucose values. The safety endpoints were hypoglycemia, other adverse events and adverse reactions, and immunogenicity, uh, which means development of anti-drug antibodies. Now, if you see the result, again, HbA1c stabilized at all time points from baseline. So you can see that uh, the HbA1c, the lines are really actually superimposed. Fasting plasma glucose by visit and treatment superimposed, which means in both the parallel arms, that means both the parallel study groups, where you are giving insulin glargine biosimilar to one by biocon and the other group giving the international glargine both of them had similar pkpd no statistically significant difference in hba1c profiles both basal and bolus insulin doses did not differ between groups why bolus because these patients in instride one were type 1 diabetic and apart from being in the parallel group where they were receiving either uh, biosimilar glargine or the u100 standard glargine they were also receiving boluses before meals of Lyspro. So even the boluses remained the same, rate of hypoglycemia remained the same, other adverse events were also comparable. So again, we come to the conclusion that Biocon's insulin glargine has similar efficacy, safety, and immunogenicity as the reference insulin glargine. This is in strike two. This is the non-inferiority study to compare the efficacy and safety of Biocon's insulin glargine with reference glargine in type 2 diabetes mellitus patients. So it's interesting, in stride 1 is type 1, in stride 2 is type 2 patients. So again, the objective was the same to determine whether biosimilar insulin is non-inferior to the reference insulin. Again, this was similar trial, multicentric, open label, randomized, two groups, one group receiving the biosimilar, the other group receiving the, um, the gold standard glargine. There were 560 type 2 diabetic patients, sample size little bigger than in stride 1. And the population studied had to have type 2 diabetes for at least one year before screening and stable dose of oral antidiabetic drugs for three months before screening. Again, similar, screened for four weeks. Then when you had all the patients you had screened whom you wanted to put in the trial, 
There were 560 such patients. They were divided into two groups. One is to one, two parallel groups. One received insulin glargine by Biocon and the other received the reference insulin glargine. They were uh, followed up. And again, we saw that the primary endpoint was, uh, was similar. Change in HbA1c is similar. And secondary endpoints, both efficacy and safety were similar in both of them. So again, you see that the reference insulin and the biocons glargine, similar PKPD, similar safety, similar efficacy. So this is very interesting. So uh, coming to uh, biosimilar, yeah, you can actually see that the standard deviation in the doses was not uh, statistically significant. Now coming to the results, mean change in HbA1c was similar. And again, rates of hypoglycemia, which means adverse events, and change in fasting plasma levels, again, similar. So safety-wise, efficacy-wise, um, the Biocons insulin was similar to the parent insulin. Now, there's another trial called the INSTRIDE 3. In this, we assess the efficacy, the insulin dose, and safety and immunogenicity when people were type 1 switched, so this is very interesting. You In this, patients who were already on uh, the standard U100 Glargy were switched to Biocons Glargy. So this is very interesting. See the study, type 1 patients with who had completed Instride 1. So you had patients in the Instride trial who had completed being on Biocons insulin, right? Or on reference insulin. Because remember in Instride 1, we had two parallel groups, one on Biocons insulin and the other on standard U100. So type 1 diabetic who completed Instride 1 and were on the reference insulin glargine, they were now given Biocons insulin glargine, right? So it's clear. So this was the first switch that happened. And they were randomized 1 is to 1. And then what happened is after this switch, again, there was another switch at 12 weeks where the reference insulin of course, the patient continued to receive Lyspro. Another switch happened in this uh, after in the uh, twelve weeks period, where now uh, the patient who were already on the uh, reference glargine was switched to the biosimilar glargine. Right. So again, at the end of twelve weeks, it was seen and uh, what happened. So there were three periods: period one, two, and three. So this was 12, 12 weeks each. So 36 weeks, patient continued to take the doses of Lyspro or Humalog for control of, uh, uh, for as boluses, right? At the end of the trial, which is week 36, and then there was a follow-up at week 40. So these were the three switches that had happened. And again, change in HbA1c from baseline to week 36 with Biocons insulin glargine was equivalent to reference insulin glargine. So even if you switch the patient who was on Biocon's insulin and, uh, sorry, who was on reference insulin and you switch them to Biocon, the efficacy remains the same. So overall incidence of hypoglycemia, again, safety, similar, no severe hypoglycemia occurred at any point. And this is interesting, cross-reactive insulin antibodies binding over time by treatments were similar. So equivalent efficacy, equivalent safety and immunogenicity was demonstrated. Uh, between the two groups of patients receiving either the Biocons uh, glargine or the U100 reference glargine. So I think I'll skip because these are similar. No statistically significant change from baseline to cross-reactive anti-drug antibodies. So they had checked this and proportion of patients who met the criteria for a cross-reactive ADA positive response. Very few people develop anti-insulin antibodies and they were similar in both the groups. So to conclude, comparable immunogenicity profiles in the two groups and proportion of patients who tested positive for anti-HCP antibodies was similar between the treatment groups. Therefore, availability of insulin products, which are cheaper, which are biosimilar, will help increase access and potentially lower the cost of insulin for people with diabetes. And US FDA has the, for the first time approved the interchangeable biosimilar glargine it is indicated to improve glycemic control in adults as well as in type 1 diabetic patients uh, who are receiving insulin. So approval of this interchangeable glargine can provide patients with safe, high quality and low cost option for treating diabetes. Right. And now the FDA and US Congress says that biological products may be substituted for the reference even without the intervention of the healthcare provider. But I don't like to reiterate this in India. 
I don't want the patients to change their insulin without talking to their healthcare provider because the pens are different, the devices are different. And sometimes when you just tell them to change the insulin or they do it themselves, they may be using a Langtus pen. And when they use another cartridge from Biocon, sometimes the cartridge may break and they may not be injecting the right doses. Even WHO says that interchangeability should be based on appropriate clinical data and safety issues should be considered, which we have already done because the three in stride trials, particularly because they were phase three trials and they did address safety in the phase three along with efficacy and immunogenicity. So in India, again, doctors, I would like to reiterate, if you want to choose a cheaper Glargine, U100 Glargine, because U100 Glargine has been the gold standard as a basal insulin for several years, you should be talking to the patient who cannot afford. You should be changing the device as well, because otherwise there'll be wrong dosing. So I think um, in Diabetes UK, of course, they say people with diabetes choose to switch. They should be encouraged. This is the position statement from Diabetes UK. And they can, because of course, NHS plays, uh, pays for their insulin, so they can change. So, but um, the challenges we faced, yes, the patients who cannot afford Glargy. So sometimes because of affordability, there may be late insulinization. And because of late insulinization and a high HbA1c, there may be complications. And there may be a rising economic burden because 80% of patients in India pay out of their pockets. So I think biosimilars are here and we, we should use them judiciously. And the three in strike studies have uh, have showed that U100 glargine by Biocon and is not inferior to the reference glargine, which is being sold in the United States and America. And therefore, we can save uh, cost by. So per unit cost, you can compare. Biosimilar insulin glargine vials are 48% more affordable than the reference product. And biosimilar insulin glargine cartridges are 23% more affordable than the reference. So I think I conclude my talk by saying that uh, our Prime Minister is talking about Atmanirbhar Bharat. So we are going towards that direction, self-reliant, and we are also providing insulin to the whole world. So it's a matter of great pride for us that Biocon is now. Uh, so Kiran Majumdar Shaw, she's providing insulin to the whole world. And there is no harm because we've actually done the PKPD study. Some of us were part of the trials which were done in India. And we've seen that uh, you can change from U100 reference glargine to U100 uh, glargine biosimilar. Normally, I discourage changing from one to another unless the patient is non-affording. But all newer patients that we want to start on basal insulin, we are actually comfortable starting with the U100 glargine, which is a biosimilar. Thank you.